It is rather rare to find a killer whose motivations can be traced to something specific that happened in their past. Perhaps they were abused by relatives, or maybe they were treated as social outcasts by their community. Oftentimes, they'll have some specific target they blame for their suffering. It is rare to witness a madman point his finger at something as broad as society and say, that's the reason why I murder all those people, that's the reason why I do the things I do. Yang Xinghai seems to have no rhyme or reason regarding what type of victims he killed. You will kill just about anyone, massacre entire families, and use whatever means necessary to leave no witnesses. He has no traceable trauma, he has no specific targets, it was just him and his relentless ambition to seek revenge on the society that he believes wronged him. Welcome back to the Midnight Hour, a show where we examine the various murders, scandals, and other crimes across Asia. I'm your host, Ellen Pugh. Now this week, I will be betraying my home country by discussing one of China's most notorious serial killers, Yang Xinghai, a man whose crimes I know for sure that the Chinese government would much rather keep under wraps. Because according to them, serial killings are just something that Western capitalist trash countries engage with. Now isn't that right, Mao? Okay, let's get into it. Yang was born in the Zhenyang County of the Heinan province on July 29, 1968. As the youngest son of one of the poorest families in the village, he was an introverted but clever young man. His relatives claimed that Yang was obsessed with writing stories of murder, stories of a fictional place that he called the Plato Flats, where all of these murders unfold. He would write these stories on almost every possession he could get his hands on, but despite his intellect, Young never applied his cleverness to academics and dropped out of high school at age 17. He has refused to return home to his family and decided to travel the country working as a laborer. In 1988, Young was sentenced to a labor camp after he was caught stealing. After his sentence was over, he got another labor camp sentence in 1991 for thievery. His crimes appeared to be getting worse because, in 1996, he got sentenced to five years in prison for attempted rape. His girlfriend at the time found out about his criminal background and left him after that. Shortly after this breakup, Yang began a murder spree that will absolutely horrify every single Chinese citizen that will witness it. From 2000 till 2003, Yang Xinghai murdered 67 victims in various provinces around China. He also raped 23 victims and assaulted many others. He will bike around Henan, Hebei, Anhui, and Shandong and lay absolute havoc on whatever house he randomly chose to slaughter that day. Yang preferred murdering small village farmers and their families while they slept. He will kill with whatever is available around him, which will often be axes, hammers, or shovels. Yang will prey on his victims at night and cleared out every single crime scene before running away. After every attack, he will change his clothes and change his shoes to a few sizes too big for the sake of drawing off investigators. Now he started out by killing one person per month, but that soon escalated because, according to Young, the more he killed, the more he desired to kill more. At the peak of his murder spree, he was averaging about two kills per week. Compare that to American serial killers Ted Bundy and the likes, that is rather horrifying. While his victims and his tools for killing are relatively random, his preferred method for homicide has always been beating people to death. One survivor, Liu Zongyuan, recalled how he saw his granddaughter dead on the ground with a hole hammered into her head. His wife, who survived a mere 10 days after Yang's attack, was beaten to the point that she can no longer speak. Perhaps one of the most frightening aspects of this case was the fact that the cops had no idea who he was, despite the fact that he was developing quite a routine throughout the years. For the longest time, they just assumed that it is impossible for one man to commit all of these murders. How Yang Xinghai was caught happened entirely by chance. November 2003, the police were doing the routine inspection at the entertainment venue in Kanzhou when they came across Yang. He was arrested only because the police found him acting rather suspiciously within the nightclub. They never expected to catch a man connected to so many homicide cases, but DNA evidence, as well as his own confession, indicated that Yang indeed murdered 67 victims as well as raped 23 others. 
There was a public outcry from Chinese citizens after they discovered that there were no reports of his homicide while Yang was still free. They had no idea that a serial killer was out on the streets. After Yang's arrest, documents surfaced indicating that the Chinese government restricted the press from reporting on any of the murders. While information about Yang Xinghai became visible to the general public, the media has dubbed him as the monster killer because he is believed to have carried out the longest killing spree in Chinese history. Sometimes the media will link his motives to that one day his girlfriend left him, but direct quotes from Yang himself suggested otherwise. In an interview broadcasted on China Central Television, Yang said, quote, When I kill people, I have a desire to kill more. This inspired me to kill more. I don't care whether they deserve to live or not. It is none of my concern. Young never showed any signs of stopping or any remorse for what he did. If he were to never be caught, it seems that Young could have easily doubled his kill count. February 1st, 2004, Young Xinghai was convicted by Law He City Intermediate People's Court. Two weeks later, he was executed by firing squad. That is all for today. Thank you for tuning in to the Midnight Hour. My name is Ellen Pugh, and I'll see you two weeks from now. So don't forget to subscribe so no case goes cold. But in the meantime, I hope you sleep well tonight. <laughs>